Happy Ford's Day. Now, a question. Is Tolkien progressive? Starting to see things crop up regarding the Rings of Power, which I wasn't satisfied with, no secret. And, you know, at the time that Peter Jackson was making the Lord of the Rings trilogy, there was just like few female character parts, and obviously they tried to sort of be a bit progressive uh, and it just gets you to thinking is or was Professor Tolkien's work progressive or not obviously there are limited female characters within the story uh, however I think you can conclude that really Lord of the Rings, The War of the Ring, is a tale, a story for progressive thinking. When you think about it, the Third Age is a war of hope after ages of darkness, contention, and the failure of... What should we say? Evil values. Mistakes have been made and are recognised. So when we get to the time of the ring being rediscovered, there are things in place. You've got one elven kingdom. And while there is a king, Galadriel is the leading figure and really the chief opponent of Sauron. So for all the forces of darkness that are gathering, it is Galadriel who is, you know, leading, if you like, the resistance or, or planning from the shadows uh, to some extent a way to bring about the downfall of darkness. I think one of the things some people can fail to connect to properly, and really Tolkien addresses this, is that elves are perceived to be arrogant. And they can come across like that. They talk matter-of-factly. And one of those matters of fact, if you like, is that the elven race as a whole is no longer strong enough to counter Sauron. And that's why you have them in these hidden realms manipulating things. And it's not without also the fact that someone like Arwen is one of their most precious, precious um, living children who, with Elrond, his wife, who was obviously Galadriel's daughter, there is a lot of sadness, a lot, a lot of loss. It's not that they're cowardly. Again, it's just that matter of fact um, understanding that they do not have the combined numbers anymore to oppose Sauron. The last alliance of elves and men was their stand. That's when they, obviously, the ring is cut from Sauron's finger. And obviously, you know, we know what happens. Isildur fails... To destroy the ring. So how 
is this story progressive? Well, to coin a phrase, I mean, let's let's not mix words about this. Denethor, steward of Gondor, is not a nice man. He's been corrupted by the Palantir. And really, he sums up, to some extent, the failings, or his perceived failings, of new ideas when he accuses Faramir of being a wizard's pupil. I don't want to go over the story of Lord of the Rings because we all know it really well. What I want to talk about is the aftermath of the War of the Ring. Obviously, Gandalf is also pivotal in the build-up of opposition of change. And this is his great work, and in particular, what he encourages is respect, honour, love. So that by the time the war is won, the world, we don't get to see it. I mean, the idea is obviously our modern world, our earth as it is as recorded by history, is the fourth age of Middle-earth. This is achieved by the sacrifices that are made, but it's also left in the hands of progressive men and women. Aragorn is a progressive man. He's not toxic masculinity, and neither is Faramir. Aemir, there's probably a little bit of debate about, but you can imagine, really, moving into the fourth age, that Aemir follows the lead of Aragorn and Faramir in their marriages, and we have this much more tolerant world. You're not going to have Aragorn sort of backhanding someone on the staff or the servants within Minas Tirith because, you know, they slipped over and crushed some tomatoes or something. That's not Aragorn. That's not Faramir. It's, these are progressive characters. They're not going to be disrespectful to their wives. I mean, really, the journey of Eowyn in her part of the story she's progressive she doesn't want to be stuck in a traditional role she doesn't want to disrespect her heritage either and it's a part of the story from the darkness and of you know traditional values uh, to some extent not having worked out fully to, you know, balance being achieved. Eowyn in particular is not sort of... She earns her credit as a warrior. And you can imagine Eowyn and Faramir being in a marriage, being a marriage of real equality progressive thinking um, also got to talk about Legolas and Gimli we have two characters in the fellowship whose races are opposed to each other and they overcome that and are best of friends which just goes to bring across certain ideas that you you find your true friends in crisis that you can overcome racial prejudice and you can create bonds of friendship and love 
I want to talk about love as well because, you know, some people always have a giggle about it and that, but one of the truest dynamics, and this just comes across as the genteel nature of the hobbits, is that Frodo and Sam love each other. Now, as master and servant, Sam is epic, and he's driven by his love for Frodo. And in turn, that becomes progressively changing, so that, yes, Frodo is the master of Sam. But that is, that ascends to something where Sam inherits from Frodo and it just goes to show that underneath the common perception there is a lot going on and they're the kind of things that you know it might not necessarily have it staring you right in the face that is just that sort of there is progressive thinking here you got to work for it but anything that's worth achieving has to be worked for you can't just be like oh there's no diversity in this story it has the diversity it's just you also need to take on board at the time of writing it of this story being written our society was considerably different. I mean, there are certain things that, if they were deliberately included, it would have been shock value and dangerous to sort of uh, even include and would not be the story it is. It's not necessarily... a direct subject matter that needs to be discussed. Its strength is in acknowledging it and it not being your sole reason for wanting to see diversity. By the end of the War of the Ring, by the time of the fourth age, you have a free world, one of hope, one of love and respect to all people, and that is guided by heroes in marriage or friendship that are the guiding lights for a better world been endured and fought through darkness. Is Tolkien pro progressive? Absolutely. If you've watched this, thank you very much. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.